Hello, my name is Mike Gag, and welcome to part 5 of my series on Windows programming with C Sharp. In this part, we are finally going to get into the Windows programming. So, uh, if you've been watching along, I thank you for your patience and your diligence. Uh, it's finally time to start the actual Windows programming now that we're familiar with the C Sharp syntax. Okay, so in part 5, we're just going to begin. To, to get into Windows programming. There's a whole lot of material to cover here, so we're going to ease our way into it. Uh, in this part, we're going to uh, uh, look at what event-driven programming is. We're going to create our first uh, our Windows program. We're going to look at labels, buttons, and text boxes, which are all called controls. Uh, now, in this video, I kind of want to talk a little bit about uh, event-driven programming. Okay. Um, up until now, you've done what I like to call procedural programming, in that the logic sort of flows from one point to the next in a very foreseeable fashion. All right, if I'm looking at code that you wrote procedurally, like the code from parts three or four, I can kind of look at the code and see, hey, this is going to happen, then this is going to happen, then this is going to happen, and you as a program know or a programmer know what order things are going to happen in. Now. In Windows programming, we enter in something called event-driven programming, where we do not know what order things are going to be called in. All right, so it's up to us as the programmers to build things very uh, modular, so that it does not matter what order they get called in. All right, because the window is just going to sit there and wait for an event to happen. An event is pretty much anything that could happen. Maybe the user typed something, maybe the user clicked a button, maybe the user hit the red X in the upper right hand corner. That red X is an event saying, hey, I'd like to close this window. All right, maybe the user resized the window, maybe the user just moved the mouse, all right? All of these things are events. And if your assumption is the user's gonna type in the field and then click the button and then hit the red X in that order, you have to be prepared for the user to hit the button before typing anything into a box or hitting the red X before typing or hitting the button. You don't know what order the user is going to do things in, all right? And so we have to program in such a way that it doesn't matter, all right? Uh, so that's kind of event-driven programming. It may not make a lot of sense now, uh, but as we start to look at it, it's going to make a lot more sense. Um, so I just want to kind of give you guys uh, that sort of indicator now that we're going to be doing something that's very different than what you've been used to. If you haven't done any Windows program at all or haven't worked with events at all, this is going to be vastly different uh, from what you're used to. Uh, so just be, be aware of that. You know, go slow and kind of pay attention to how things are working. I like to, to, to kind of compare Windows programming with Legos or building blocks. All right. Uh, each block in and of itself is a complete piece. All right. It's only when you put the blocks together to get a fully, I'd say, working program, but like a, a truck or a house or whatever you're building with the blocks. All right. Um, but each piece stands alone. All right. And that's how our program is going to work. Each function, each method, each class needs to stand completely alone, but we can still put them together to achieve something meaningful. All right. Uh, so uh, coming up in our very next video, we're going to make a, a Windows program and then we're going to start talking about why and how it works.